Hey, hello everyone. This is Charles Folkard, January 28th, 2017. I welcome everyone. Thank you for subscribing, liking, and sharing, and all that. I got a lot to talk about, but um, I want to concentrate on one thing today, right now, and that is electromagnetic wave propagation coming off of a what they call a ham radio. They use um, this in communication between the alleged ISIS, I'm sorry, I always say ISIS, ISS, the International Space Station, and then they used it when they allegedly were on the moon, the, the astronauts had the transceivers and the transmitters in their helmet and they could talk to the command module that was up there over the moon going around the moon while they were down on the moon you think about all this fuck people it's uh, it's ridiculous and then they were also able to transmit all the way back to Houston which is allegedly 238,000 miles away and I don't want to get into all that but if you know the how this how the radios transmit and receive and how many power it takes to push the the electromagnetic waves out through the air you'll begin to realize that that what they're saying isn't true it, it doesn't work according to their own understanding of the propagation of electric electromagnetic waves in the air and the, where they get the electromagnetic waves is that one wave is going perpendicular to the other wave and it goes in a cycle and I don't want to get too much into the uh, um, specifics and all you know and all the uh, the technicalities because it's pretty complicated and that you have to take a test in order to get your technicians license and they go into that in the book and in, in, in the class and it's it takes a while to wrap it took me a while to wrap my mind around all of it and I want to look into it a little more before I explain it but there's enough information that I can share with you right now to help you help you get an understanding of where th there are holes there are uh, inconsistencies in the thinking of those who believe in the spinning spear uh, heliocentric 93 million miles away 238 thousand miles away for the moon etc one quick thing while I'm talking here let's assume the astronauts are on the moon and they're communicating back 238,000 miles through space, through the vacuum of space, they say, all the way through the atmosphere of the Earth, all the way to Houston. But let's just say Houston now is on the other side of the, uh, in their spin, opposite of the moon. See? You think about it, it's not going to work. They even talk about that on the propagation, and I will show you how the waves have to bounce off of the ionosphere in order to get around the curvature of the Earth. They just assume that the Earth is curved, and that's how it's working. And I'm going to show you here in a moment if I would stop talking and get to the, to the context here, to the content. This fella here made a, uh, a comment uh not too long ago and he goes on here and, I, and i'm not going to read all that to you but i responded up here and i was going to read that 
so that you can get an understanding of where they're coming from and my response. <clears throat> now, I'm not saying that I'm 100% correct, but you'll notice the attitude that these people have. They come here and they watch the video and instead of having an inquisitive mind, they, they right away they want to tell you, you're wrong, I'm right, you don't know anything about the earth, you don't know anything about electromagnetic wave propagation. And it won't work on a flat earth. It works on a curved earth. When the whole time, they could very well be, and they are, working on a flat earth. And yet they think it's a curved earth because they see these kind of pictures. Now, this is the kind of picture they show you. And they try to explain how the, uh, the waves, the electro electromagnetic waves are being transferred to from one city to the next now I have to be careful here because I'm not that experienced in this, in this and I admit it I haven't been a ham radio operator very long at all and I don't know as much as some of these other people do and I know darn well if I even make the one little slightest mistake, I'm going to have some ham operator. He's going to jump all over me. Never mind all the other 99% of the stuff that uh, is correct. He's going to make sure that he lets me know that I don't know what I'm talking about on this one item. So for all the rest of you that are still trying to figure this stuff out, I'm talking to you. And you, that one guy... Or those few people that are going to come here that are clinging to the spinning spear model. You know what? Go somewhere else. Go, go to your global friends or you go, you know, unless you have a question and you're really seeking the truth, just go somewhere else. All righty. But here's what I want to show you. They assume the earth is curved. And they assume that these waves go up here to the ionosphere and they bounce off the ionosphere and they can take, look, there's, there's, it bounces off, hits the ground, bounces again and gets all the way over here to New York. Well, I'm suggesting that if you put a level horizon here, you could do the same thing. You can bounce the waves off of the ionosphere and you could hit the ground and you could hit and take a hop and you could reach from San Francisco to New York on a flat earth just like you could on the alleged curved earth. So that argument isn't going to hold, doesn't pass the smell test. It works on both. Number two, they're assuming that it's the waves are bouncing off the ionosphere they're assuming that there's no way to detect as far as i know now if somebody wants to come here and go hey charles you're wrong and this is how we know it's bouncing off the ionosphere then fine make a comment we'll discuss it maybe i'll learn something and maybe you're right maybe i'm wrong the difference between me and a lot of people that I meet is a lot of other people think they're 100% right and I'm 100% wrong and I can't teach them anything. I'm here to learn from you. If you've got something to, sh to teach and share and educate me on, man, I'm there. Put it in the comment section and don't attack me with at home and attacks because that gets old real quick. That just shows me that you're, you're, uh, you're immature and you can't carry on an adult conversation at the adult table. You don't go into a courtroom and tell the other attorney that you don't agree with that he's a friggin' idiot and his evidence is no good and all this other stuff. The, the judge would throw you out of the courtroom on your ass. So why is it you think you can come here in the comment section and you can call people idiots and you don't know what you're talking about and not be polite and civil and go, hey, Charles, I disagree with you, and this is why I disagree with you, but I might be wrong, and you might be right, or you might be wrong, and I might be right, so let's have a 
a debate, let's have a, a discussion about the issues and keep the personal attacks out of it. Please, can you do that much? A lot of you can't do that. All righty, but let's move on here. So I'm going to show you another uh, image here that is used quite a bit in the ham radio world. So I hope you can hear this, but this is the note A on a guitar. The E, the A chord, no, I'm sorry, the A note on a guitar vibrates 220 times per second. That's how it produces the sound that we know of as the A note. Now that's a hertz is how many alternating cycles that are completed per second. One complete alternating cycle per second is a hertz. And all of the frequencies in the radio frequency spectrum that you see here on this chart are measured in hertz. And for you Israelites out there, the hertz is named after a German. And the Germans are one of the tribes, I think it's Judah, pretty sure it's Judah, of the tribe or, or of the Israelites. <coughs> but that's another topic. But I mention that because it's the Israelites that have been a blessing for all the other nations on the earth. This same chart is in this book that is used by many people to take their test with. And I'm showing you this because it's going to be important to understand what we're going to talk about here in a minute. As you can see here, this is down here, right here. This is very low frequency. That means there's very few alternating waves taking place per second. And it, it takes high frequency to go a longer distance and and to do certain operations that you can't do at the lower frequency. So we have very low frequency, we have low frequency, we have in the middle or the medium, we have high frequency, and then we have very high frequency, and then over here we have ultra high frequency, and I believe this S stands for super high frequency, and you can see the different use that is made of these different bands, the, the different um, frequency bands that are used. For instance, this one is used for your cordless phone, very low frequency or low frequency. Um, high frequency is amateur radio, ship to shore, and I think international broadcast, and the CB. And then you, you have the different ones, and I don't want to go into all that, but that gives you a little bit of background on what we're going to talk about here on this comment that was made underneath one of the videos I produced. So we're back over here, so you can see the video. It's Space is not a vacuum, and I think it's, uh, I don't know what number it is. Let me check for you. 160, 168, and this comment was made, and what I did was, is I took a quote, and, I, and he says, this Jim Van Dam says, the reason you need repeaters on VHF, very high frequency on Earth, is because of the curvature. And I say, you're assuming Curvature. The reason repeaters are needed is because the wattage of the transmitter is not powerful enough to propagate the electric 
electromagnetic waves over extended distances. And he says, number two, see, my response is just as equal as his response, in my opinion. There's no need for the curvature of the Earth. It works on a flat Earth just as well. Number two, high frequency can be bounced off the ionosphere. And I say, well, high frequency electromagnetic waves can also be bounced off the ionosphere on a level plane Earth. Yes? And that answer, the answer to that is yes. Are you simply assuming those diagrams, the one I showed you, about the curvature of the Earth and the electromagnetic waves bouncing off the ionosphere accurately, accurately represent what is actually taking place? He's just assuming what he sees on that picture that I showed you earlier is the way it is. But Christoph, let me ask you, why do you think that uh, Truman has never come close to discovering the true nature of his world until now? We accept the reality of the world with which we're presented. It's as simple as that. The Hague for Christoph. But he can't verify that for himself. There's no way that I know of, and if you know of a way, then put it in the comments here and we'll talk about it because I'd like to learn. He's just assuming <coughs> that the picture he's shown is accurate. I don't assume. I've learned now that we've been lied to about everything so I don't assume anything anymore. Okay, so number three. He says we use a 300 watt continuous wave amp but gated it into four second pulses. Now you probably know hams who have done EME. That's Earth, Moon, Earth. They bounce their waves, their electromagnetic waves off of the moon from a transceiver to the moon and back and they receive it so I suggest you ask them how well it worked well I did just that when I was taking my class to get my license for to be a ham radio operator a legal ham radio operator and they told me yes you can bounce electromagnetic wave radio waves off of the moon and I said well what amp do you use? And they said, well, the highest amp that you can use as an amateur in my class, in the, in the technician's class, is 1,500 watts. So that he was telling me that he believed that a 1,500-watt transmitter could go from the Earth through the atmosphere all the way to the moon, 238,000 miles away, when that same amplifier or that same uh, transmitter on the Earth can't even go, can't go very far on the Earth. I don't know how far it can go, to be honest with you. I have to check into that. Now, I'm going to insert an edit here because I know somebody's going to come and say, well, Charles, don't you know that you can transfer over long distances on the earth I, I, there's people ham radio operators that go from the west coast to japan and they go over to bali i had one person say yeah we can reach indonesia hey i get it i understand that these waves can go a long way but there's quite a bit of difference between three four thousand miles on the earth when it can bounce off of the ionosphere or go up to the firmament and bounce off, then going 238,000 miles. And if you think about it, that makes perfect sense on a flat Earth map. Here's uh, over here is Indonesia, and right there I think is uh, Bali. So. From the west coast of the United States across to Japan and over to Bali, it's almost a straight line and it makes perfect sense. Okay? You spinning spirist, you've got to admit that. That wave, those waves, could bounce off of the ionosphere even if we assume that you're right and that's what happens. 
and it's almost a straight line. And that's a better case for a level Earth than it is a spinning spear Earth with your curvature. But I know darn well it's not going to go 238,000 miles. It may go, I know it goes 100 miles because they do it, and I believe the, the moon is only 100 miles away. So that makes sense. Doesn't that make sense to you? They're propagating these electromagnetic waves. They say they send them to the moon and back, but they need repeaters on the Earth to be able to go even a few miles with lower frequency, I'm sorry, lower powered transmitters. So, in, so let me recap. With a 300 watt continuous wave amplifier, this man, this Jim Van Dam says they can go 238,000 miles to the moon. And I'm saying baloney. You can't be done. But if the moon is only 100 miles away, I'm right there. I agree. So either I'm right and you're wrong or you're right and I'm wrong. Now I want you to show me a 300 watt transmitter that can go even 300 miles or 400 miles and that's why I didn't want to do this in-depth video until I actually can look because it's hard to find I, I went looking for it and I couldn't find how far to transmit and I think that's because of the conditions but let's let's keep going here okay so you might also mention you don't believe the moon is a solid object or the earth is round and see what their reaction is. So I don't care what they think. They think they know it all. And, and, and I had this one guy, he basically said, no, I believe in the facts when I mentioned this to him. I don't care whether you believe that, that uh, if the earth is round or not. So, you know, you should have seen my reaction when this man told me that he can bounce or they can bounce electromagnetic waves off the moon 238,000 miles away and get it back. You should have seen my reaction. So I say here, do you really think your 300 watt continuous wave amp, amp was able to propagate electromagnetic waves 238 miles to the moon? And I asked the same question to other ham radio operators and they told me, yes, a 300 watt receiver can reach 238,000 miles. You should have seen my reaction, and I think that's absurd. Electromagnetic waves can be bounced off the moon because the moon is only 100 miles away. And then I ask, have you considered that possibility? Isn't real science on my side, not yours? Then he says, we also use radar to track the ISS and r r radar stat 1, which is in polar orbit, which could be a problem on a flat Earth. And my question is, why would that be a problem on the flat Earth? And I haven't got an answer back yet. The ISS, I say, is not what you think it is. There is no way an approaching craft traveling at the speeds they say they are which is 17,000 miles an hour, how it can make the maneuvers necessary to dock with an ISS also traveling at 17,000 miles an hour. Now think about that for a minute. You got the IRS, uh, IRS, <laughs> the ISS, I got a lot of things in my mind. I, I've been doing some uh, comments on the IRS. ISIS, IRS, ISS, Miss. Okay, it's all in there, but it's got to come out. So, they're traveling at 17,000 miles an hour, and you got to have another uh, spacecraft, which when the rocket leaves the Earth and it's going up and trying to escape what they say is the gravity, well, what does it do? It drops the, the majority of its uh, power, it drops it off, and it keeps going. And and we can look at it, and the, the speed doesn't change. The speed just keeps, just like it was before it dropped off. So how does it pick up the speed 
to get up to 17,000 miles an hour to catch up with the ISIS that's up there and then come in and connect and, 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 uh, um, they call it, uh, talking. How, how does that happen? Okay. It, it doesn't happen. Uh, it, it, that's why it, it, that, that's how it happens. It doesn't happen. So further, I say here, the vacuum of space, uh, NASA and Neil deGrasse says would suck the ISS out of its orbit as well as the Earth atmosphere. And I thank you very much for your comment. The more you look into this, folks, the more what the spinning spirits believe they take by faith doesn't make any sense when you analyze it and use their own science and use their own information in the in their own books that they they teach out of and then when you show them a discrepancy you should see the look on their face they've never thought before in their entire lifetime that the earth might be flat one more thing before i forget a lot of these ham radio operators operate at night so there's something about operating in the day that interferes with the signal. And I'm suggesting, I would suggest, it has to do with the sun heating up the atmosphere. It excites the particles in the air, and so the electromagnetic wave that wants to travel through this, the air can't do it as well as it can at night when it cools down the atmosphere there's no sun beating on it and so that's why it's easier to travel longer distances at night and the other thing that I'm asking myself now questioning is what happens on when the full moon is out what kind of an effect does that have on the transmission of these high frequencies coming out of the radio transmitters because I believe the moon is an electromagnetic electromagnetic force and it probably has an effect on the surface of the earth and it's the electromagnetic force which is causing the low tides and the high tides and not the pull of the moon and not the pull of the sun Pull of the moon is what they say here on the earth. Pulls the ties off. Anyway, that's a little bit of a sidetrack, but it is related because I believe the moon is an electromagnetic object. And it's its, it's, its own light. It's God says in scripture, he created two great lights. One to rule the day and one to rule the night. So the sun is not what's reflecting off of the moon to get the light on the moon. The moon has its own light. And yes, God's smart enough to make it look like the sun is making it shine there because God is a, is a, is a mathematician, uh, the first and number one mathematician. Whew. Two cups of coffee will will uh, get the blood going. I guarantee you that. You know. Thank you for. I wasn't going to do this edit because it takes a lot longer now to uh, when I go to upload this onto the hard drive and and save it. It's going to take quite a bit longer, but I think it's important enough to uh, to do that. I uh, I've mentioned this quite a few times I really like this quote you can observe a lot by watching and I went back when I was doing the editing and I used a little different picture than I that I'm using this time but you see how how they say that the transmitter transmits the waves the electromagnetic waves and and they say here they call these a space wave and the wave just goes off of the antenna or the uh, transmitter and it goes if when it goes this way it just goes right 
through the ionosphere. But somehow, if you angle it, it hits the it hits the ionosphere and it causes what they call a sky wave. Now, I don't understand why it will just go up here and make a bounce. See, I mean, is there some kind of a uh, a special angle? So that's one question. And this is the same image I showed earlier, and. And, and here they got it, if your wave goes up this way, it just goes up into space. But if it goes at an angle, then it hits the ionosphere and goes off the ionosphere and it skips on the ground and it gets over from San Francisco to, in this picture, New York. Now my question is, what happens if you're coming the other way? What happens if you're out in space like they say they are in the ISS? See, I didn't say ISIS this time. In the ISS or on the moon. And, and, and you're shooting your, your wave. And by the way, the fellow that I quoted in this video earlier, he responded. And he says, and one of his response was, because I mentioned about the 300 watt, he said, well, let's take a 3,500 kilowatt and put it on a 200 foot tower. How's that work for you? And I go, so my question is, was there a 3,500 kilowatt transmitter on the moon or in in the in the space shuttle or wherever they say they're they are transmitting their waves and their signal back to the earth was that up there i don't think so all right you don't i mean see see it doesn't work that's an inconsistency and when you bring that up to them they ignore it and they try to tell you some well it's rocket science is what he said you have to you know you have to do your math well and and it's, you know, and basically that I'm not a rocket scientist. And so, you know, we'll, we're going to leave it to the experts, which is an appeal to authority. But I digress. So let's say we're up, up in space, wherever, and we're, we're on the moon or we're in ISS and we're going to shoot our, our electromagnetic radio waves back to the Earth. And we've got the ionosphere that we have to go through. What's to stop the uh, it the wave from hitting the ionosphere on the way in and going back up? What makes them assume it's just going to go right straight through? There are some more questions, all right? And I'm going to put this in an edit, and I hope you don't mind. I added to the length of the video, but I think it's worth it. I hope you do, too watching embrace the love of the truth and may god's grace the creator of the level plain earth covered by a firmament who created the electromagnetic waves who created the ionosphere may his grace be with us all for we certainly need it see ya christoph let me ask you why do you think that uh, Truman has never come close to discovering the true nature of his world until now? We accept the reality of the world with which we're presented. It's as simple as that. The Hague for Christoph.